Hello everyone, this is Zoya Kidwai. I work as an architect with UVCT, that is Urban Village Charitable Trust. My paper is titled To be Containing Village Abadi Area for Protecting Agricultural Land. So, um, what actually is the connection between containing the village abadi area and agricultural land we can understand by this if we actually talk about normal planning a basic planning of the villages how it is is that the abadi areas that is the residential land lies in the central part and the agricultural land surrounds it now what happens is with time when there is a need of more housing or expansion of the village what happens is it grows up grows outwards okay so the agricultural land is eaten up by the uh, growth growing area as a result there is a reduction in the agricultural land now if the villages continue to expand the way they have been in the past 50 years we will soon have no land for agriculture left therefore it's the need of the R to control the expansion of these abadi villages abadi areas in the villages and uh, so that the agricultural land also can be conserved so my paper talks about the same and it identifies the necessary steps and also identifies the reasons more reasons for it for the, for the reason behind this and how this can be resolved. Now, importance of agriculture, I think we are all very much aware about how important agriculture is for our country. It's the primary economy. Okay, it is among, India is amongst the top two farm producers in the world. It is on the seventh position in the list of biggest agriculture good exporters in the world. It provides approximately 60% of the total number of jobs available in India. Okay, so agriculture also is only means for almost, uh, means of living for almost two third of the employees class in India. It uh, occupies 43% of India's geographical area, but it is shrinking at a very rapid rate over the last three decades. And this is a cause of concern. Why is it a cause of concern? It is a cause of concern because our population has increased by 41% since 1981, but our agriculture land has decreased. Leave so many years, even if I talk about last 25 years, that is from 1995 to 2020, there has been a decrease from 1.41 hectares to 1.15 hectares, which actually accounts for the decrease of 30,000 hectares of cultivable land each year. That's a huge, huge, huge number. Okay, also the land sizes are decreasing. You know, uh, we this is a very normal thing that we can only do agriculture in the rural areas because there is availability of large land now what is happening is the land size is also decreasing and in totality also it's decreasing the graphs shows the decrease in the agricultural land and the increase in the non-agricultural land now what is the main reason behind this problem main re reason behind this problem is development in the name of development, we are simply reducing our agriculture fields and building concrete structures on them. Uh, the development is also killing the character of the village and making it look more like an urbanized area. Uh, now, uh, what happens is that the farmers also get attracted to it because, uh, you know, they get good prices for their lands. Reasons being, if we talk about the reasons for the development or the reasons for the agricultural land, it has to be firstly the uncontrolled growth of villages, secondly the lack of rules, regulations and policies for the increment and development in the rural areas, thirdly, thirdly the um, proposals of new roads and expressways and the planning falls. Uh, due to which the agricultural land is being eaten up. So we will just discuss about it in detail. So the first and the foremost and the most important reason being uncontrolled growth of villages. Now, if we see the current scenario of the villages, it's really bad in India with no proper policies, rules and regulations for the growth. Of course, with, as the population is increasing, so is the need of housing. Because of this, there's an uncontrolled sprawl that is witnessed in rural areas, which is eating up the agriculture fields. What happens is, 
that there is a concept of horizontal growth in the villages they don't want to go vertical okay so as there's a need to start constructing houses in their agricultural fields now uh, especially along the roads which connect the two nearby villages thinking that you know all the facilities and amenities that are there in the other villages can also be shared by them so as a result what happens is unknowingly all the nearby villages start growing towards each other and they form a big urban sprawl this needs to be addressed immediately uh just talk uh, putting it in a picture through uh, example uh, this is a village called masoli in district baradanki up now the first image is from 2004 and the last one is from 2021 which is like 17 years in 17 years we can see that almost uh, the the size of the the boundary of the village has increased and it has almost uh, gone double okay in 17 years you know if the growth continues to be at this rate soon it will eat up all the agricultural land and get converted into a big sprawl by merging into nearby villages which are also growing towards it so both the villages that are growing towards each other will definitely become a big urban sprawl eating up all the agricultural land. now a question then arises if the apathy boundaries will be restricted how will the village grow the village still can grow but vertically now the existing houses can be densified instead of developing new houses on agricultural fields as per the needs the existing houses can be densified this is a very rare practice and it's not found in india but this is uh, in the rural part basically but it is a much more intelligent way of dealing the uncontrolled growth so if we actually compare the achieved far of a rural area to an achieved far of a maybe small town there's huge difference okay uh, the far of uh, villages is around 0.25 to 0.75 and of a small town is 1.25 and 2 it's between 1.25 and 2 which is a huge difference i'm not saying that we go high rise in rural areas of course not but we can go for g plus 1 g plus 2 or maximum g plus 3 structures those are the structures that can easily be constructed in their vernacular practices and that of course because of the densification it will accommodate more people and our agriculture fields will be saved the second reason the proposals of ring roads highways expressways etc now what happens is whenever we talked about uncontrolled growth the common and the most uh, you know the first thing that comes in a person's mind and a planner's mind is that we can propose a road around it so that it confines the village boundary but contrary to that happens with time and time again this is a tried and tested met, tested failure what happens is two villages exist independently a road or a national highway or expressway comes in between okay the development starts uh, ha- taking place around uh, along these roads and national highways because of course there is a need and also the land prices and everything increases a- a- around these parts now what happens is the villages start will it start growing towards the national highway and vice versa so as a result you can see the fourth image and eventually turns into a big urban sprawl the two villages that were happily Uh, existing separately are now one big urban sprawl just because of one road uh, that's that is something that we need to take care of now of course the development of other roads like expressways highways etc can not be stopped yes ring roads can be but expressways highways can not be stopped what should be done they can be proposed but by leaving a peripheral green belt this peripheral peripheral green belt will act as a buffer between the abadi areas and the road now uh, if there is a buffer the growth the outward growth of the village decreases okay because they are confined because of the green belt so 
therefore there uh, the development of course near the roads and the highways takes place but it never gets added to the village of other areas and it does not form a big urban sprawl so these are the uh, few examples where this practice has been successfully uh, done third reason comes up to be change in land use now what happens is that agricultural land is bought by somebody by a person who can afford it from the farmers at good rates and converted into some and its land use is changed to some other land use commercial institutional or for that matter any other land use what happens is this is something that's very fruitful for the farmers as well as the buyers because both of them are gaining money so that is why this practice cannot be stopped at smaller levels this has to have a larger solution what happens is there are of course there are policies that restricts the land use change of agricultural land but they all have loopholes you know for a you know if we actually see the uh, the big companies they buy these lands from the agriculture from the farmers and convert it to different land uses as per the need as and when needed and actually generate double the revenue but it's very fruitful for the farmer as well so these need to be stopped at larger levels for that we need to look into the acts guidelines and policies that are existing in india now talking about these they are not at all self sufficient they need backups they need amendments talking about the first one which can be town and country planning act so town and country planning act only talks about town does not touch country by country i mean the rural area even though it was created back in 1900s when uh, agriculture and when when the people used to live in rural areas more but like 68.8% of the population lived in rural areas back then still they never still uh, this act does not talk about rural areas does not talk about country the act was developed on the lines of uk and thus never suited the indian context adequate amendments were never made for it to suit into the indian context coming up to next urdpfi guidelines as the name suggests it totally talks about urban areas yes it does mention about small towns but does not touch up upon agricultural land or rural planning okay but for a successful urban area also there must be an equally or more successful rural area then only can the density and development in the urban areas be controlled and established and and evenly distributed now for for rural development the ministry of panchayati raj had developed a draft of rdpfi guidelines in the year 2016 but it is in its self incomplete it only covers the basic rural planning and development but fails to talk about the residential sector individually houses as a built agriculture lands growth of rural areas it does not talk about it and these are the things that must be mentioned and must be talked about now uh, talking about the policies to protect agriculture land of course government has time and again introduced various policies to prevent the conversion of agriculture land for non agriculture purpose the main two policies being first national policy for farmers 2007 and second national rehabilitation and resettlement policy now the first policy recommends that conserving the prime farm lands for agriculture purpose except under exceptional circumstances with a few conditions there is the loophole this is something there is ambiguity you know it can have somebody somebody can take advantage of it very easily it it has loopholes likewise second policy states that the projects must must be set up on base lands and not on irrigation land until and unless there is some emergency now again 
This policy again has missing links, which can be taken advantage of. In both of these policies, there's a scope of land use change as they do not have one single clear interpretation, instead have loopholes, which can be used to convert the agricultural lands as per the user's wish. Therefore, these policies individually cannot protect the agricultural land. These need supporting policies from the housing and growth sectors and amendments with no ambiguity in order to work completely and prove useful. Now to conclude, agriculture needs to be protected because it is a primary economy. Over 70% of rural households depend on agriculture. Moreover, it is the seventh uh, largest net explorer, uh, exporter of agriculture products. We are uh, as Indians are privileged to have such diverse geography that almost everything can be grown within the country. This certainly is an asset to one and each living in the country. With agriculture being such an important factor in the growth and development of the nation, there's an immediate need to protect these lands from extinguishing. This can be done by containing village abadi areas within boundaries so that the percentage of agricultural land in the country at least remains constant instead of depreciating in fact uh, if we look into it with the increase in population the agricultural land must also increase a thought towards that is also required but only once the existing agricultural lands are conserved to conserve we of course must densify the current abadi areas instead of increasing the abadi area boundaries we must uh put in amendments in policies, acts, and guidelines, keeping in mind the rural scenario and the Indian context. And also the planners and us planners and architects, we all must plan the villages and adjoining areas more responsibly and intelligently, keeping in mind the importance of agriculture in rural areas. So thank you, that was it. And I hope I made sense and uh, I could give you some information some useful information for any questions you can comment below and thank you